Okay, so now that we know we have a future vision of, of what this metaverse can look like, we're going to start thinking about seven with a bonus, eight and all, uh, areas or layers to this overall experience. And what we're doing is we're di di dissecting these layers to look for job opportunities um, and opportunities. You know, it's a similar conversation when we're talking about when I'm talking with fund managers about investment opportunities, it's looking at where the need is going to be and looking at getting ahead of that. So it's like, a, and I'm not into sports at all, but a sports analogy of running to where the ball is going, not to where the ball is now. We need to think about what the where the future is going and upskill in that early so that when the demand is at its highest, you can already say, look, I've got five years experience in this. Um, that's where you want to be. So we'll go, we'll hit each of these layers one at a time. The hardware layer. So this is what you may have already seen glimpses and clues of in, in the media. Um, and if anyone's been um, following the CES conference that's just passed, some amazing technology in the space. These are the physical technologies and devices that we use to interact with the metaverse, really thinking about immersive experiences, um, augmented reality, virtual reality, which comes under this umbrella of ex, um, extended reality, which we'll, we'll talk about soon. Um, any kind of consumer facing hardware that allows a person to be immersed, and that includes mobile phones and other um, technologies like that. For example, there's a mobile phone just coming out, come out and expanding that is purely blockchain based on the Solana ecosystem. A good example of consumer facing hardware. Enterprise hardware. So like lots of things in the world, you've got the consumer facing side, which everyone sees in the media and talks about. And then you've got the enterprise side that's behind the scenes that is often much bigger um, with huge opportunities, but it's just more of a, a, a corporate behind the curtain type of situation. These are the kind of industrial cameras, um, the kind of projection tracking systems, scanning sensors. These are all elements of um, even what some people are calling now the industrial metaverse. Um, a huge talking point at the Davos World Economic Foundation uh, conference coming up. Uh, is it this week or next week? I can't remember. But they have a whole article on their website about the industrial metaverse um, being one of the first to expand and examples of companies using digital twin technology. So basically making a 3D immersed virtual rendering of their physical factory and using the digital, the digital twin of that to innovate and, and and develop and and things like that um, at a much at a fraction of the cost without using physical materials. Fascinating stuff. Status developed, you know, uh, prototypes, early um, generation, first, second generation technology um, is out, but really looking to refine and scale. So Lots of these um, technologies like the headsets and the gloves can be very expensive, um, but of course prices come down as scale goes up. So we can expect that to happen as mass adoption occurs. In terms of jobs, we're thinking about things like, um, you know, specialist engineers, software developers, uh, people that are experienced in user design and user experience, and of course all the sales and marketing that comes along with um, marketing and selling this to the consumer and retail and to corporations. So if you are in one of these spaces or looking to get into these spaces, just constantly think about how you can develop a niche skill set, looking at applying your skills to these new emerging areas, um, because that is what will give you the advantage going forward. The next layer is the computing layer. So this is a little bit of a problem at the moment. So computing power. The types of demands that a metaverse experiences puts on a computer and a server and a server 
is intense. There's the, the physics calculations, the rendering, and it's not just one user in an environment like, a, let's say, for example, a game. It's hundreds or thousands of people um, all in that environment together. Um, and that is where, at the moment, the technology falls short. So when we talk about concrete examples, later we'll talk about sandbox. Um, you'll notice lots of these early metaverse experiences are quite pixelated. It's not just to be cute or retro or Minecraft focused. It's because it's basically a necessity to be able to make it work with the current computing power. So, of course, what we really want is a really well 3D avatar type of um, visual experience. That is not going to come until we have better computing power. So we need a lot more computing power. And, you know, if you're IT engineer, you know, looking at research and development, quantum computing, these are all the kinds of areas that are, are going to be in a lot in demand as we look to scale up this computing layer. Similar to this, networking layer. So looking at um, concurrent users. Uh, when we have multiple persistent real-time connections, we need really high bandwidth and we need really, really strong networks. Um, and at the moment, we are behind on that. Oops, let's just go back up. So the types of um, areas to specialize in, network engineers, software developers, service provider roles, these are all roles that people might already be in and can already um, have lots of opportunities right now. But these are also ones that you can look to develop a niche uh, subject matter expert level in these emerging technologies to take maximum advantage. Virtual platforms. So these are these immersive digital platforms that we're talking about, where users jump in, they explore, they create, socialize, work, play, um, everything from, you know, racing a car, doing a class, listening to music, and of course, engaging in economic activity, selling things, buying things, trading things. Um, one of the huge uh, differentiators from what we would currently call, you know, like Fortnite and those types of uh, multiplayer experiences is that the ecosystem is open so other people come in and create the items so most of the content is actually made by users around the world um, and uh, that's where the bulk of economic activity comes from rather than a centralized entity like what Fortnite would be or Roblox for example Roblox um, status scaling up um, got some exciting stuff happening this year um, now, some of the jobs here starting to look a little bit different, something a little bit interesting, voxel builders. So basically voxels are 3D pixels, 3D pixel. Um, voxel builders, this is a, a new job that didn't exist kind of five years ago, really. Um, there will need to be guides in, this, in these virtual worlds to help people um, find their way around. So you can specialize in that. Um, lots of these, of course, you can do on the side. You can do as a side hustle. Um, play to earn. There are already people that make their living by just playing some of these metaverse type experience games. And of course, all the marketing and promotion. So one of the things I do in my company is we have a store in Sandbox um, that's been built by an agency. And we can use that to host, um, you know, NFT art galleries. We can host special pop-up stores for brands um, as part of their marketing and promotion. So this, um, they had the beta release uh, at different stages last year. Um, I'll let you read over this and dive in in your own time. You can, you can jump in right now and experience it. It's really, really fun. This is a, an overview of the map and you can start to see the big brands that have already purchased huge multi-million dollar parcels of land investing in this future economic activity. Um, making voxels, selling things, um, creating, creating engaging games. And these are the types of brands that have already, this is just literally just a small snippet 
of the big brands that are already investing hard concrete dollars, hundreds of thousands, millions of, of dollars in some of these games and activities and marketing um, brand activations, it's only going to get bigger. Interchange tools and standards layer. So in order for this interoperability to all work together, there needs to be an agreement on what the standards are. Now with the internet, this happened quite early. Um, and so those that have a really good understanding of, of IT will know that most of the rails that the internet is built on, the, between servers and between clients, it's all open source software that anyone can use. And that was really key in the internet taking off because it was essentially an open platform that anyone can build upon. Um, and that's what we want for the metaverse. Um, open and closed together, for the, from, the from the user point of view, it needs to work smoothly. Um, everything from you know, how products are rendered, moving digital goods between platforms, um, and all that, those types of, of tooling and information management, there needs to be some agreement on how it's done and how it can be universal access. Now, if you're interested in this, and I would say, for even if you're not interested in this particular aspect, please follow the WC3. They really are pioneering what is the standard for lots of elements of the metaverse. Um, and so the types of things that they are they themselves are hiring in all the time and looking for people, research, code development, translations. If it's going to be a standard globally, it's going to have to be in different languages. Um, and of course, ambassadors um, and, and key people to promote this. Payments layers. Um, we This is one of the layers that is already largely built out in many ways, but of course will develop. And this is how money moves around. In particular, how people on-ramp their assets, so how they convert their local currency to the digital currency. So for Sandbox, the digital currency is called Sand. And of course, if you are selling art and things like that um, in NFTs in Sandbox, chances are you'll have to convert that back to local currency to pay your mortgage and 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 you know pay for your kids school and stuff like that um because the real world isn't going to accept digital currencies everywhere for a long time so these on and off ramps are where there's opportunities as well um because these are places where people can um you know help improve the experience um, of course, there's transaction fees involved and things like that. So um, these on and off ramps make generate revenue. Um, here are just some examples. Now, this is how fast the space is moving. There are already so many examples like this around the world. This was just a, a small handful of examples. Um, it's being developed, but of course, a lot more maturing relationships. And you know, crypto can be a volatile space. Um, some of the, the, the companies that partnered with FTX, for example, are no longer <laughs> because they've collapsed. So um, it can be uh, volatile, but those that stick around will benefit the most. Now, this is a particular layer where it's quite interesting. There are opportunities for traditional finance roles to specialize in these types of activities. And of course, encryption, e-commerce, anything that we think about in the investment world is a toll booth. Um, that basically means when people are, are, are driving backwards and forwards, they've got to give you a little bit for, for passing through. And that's what lots of these businesses are. It's only a tiny bit, but it's less than what people have to pay traditional retailers with credit cards at the moment. Um, but of course, it adds up. Content services and assets layer. Um, so creating these assets, selling them, storing them securely, um, and making sure that user data and identity is looked after. Um, these are all types of things that are going to become very, very in demand. Copyright laws are still catching up. 
there's lots of controversy around copyright and NFTs and, and things like that. Um, and so it's very much a quick evolving space. A lot of it will happen outside of the mainstream media because it's, it's just not that interesting at the moment for lots of people. So you're going to have to really pull and find people that are in the space innovating um, and keep up to date yourself. And of course, this has to do with regulation, which is different country to country. Um, and so there will always be opportunities with copyright law and traditional finance roles to help bridge these two worlds, this digital world to the current um, real world. There always needs to be bridges there. And so there's demand for that knowledge. And of course, the behavioral layer. So like anything, um, consumer behavior is valuable. So understanding how and why people are spending their time, attention, money, um, understanding these trends will be very, very important. And so this comes, at, you know, jobs along the lines of um, data mining, BI analytics, consumer behavior, you know, marketing, psychology, these are all areas that people can start to uh, become subject matter experts within the Web3 crypto and metaverse world. Mm -hmm.